Hello and welcome back to this series on Python for DH, specifically deep learning and neural networks for DH. So in this video, we're going to be continuing with what we saw in the last video when we looked at deep learning and neural networks on a very, very basic level. You were introduced to several key concepts, this idea of learning that is training a model. In the case that we looked at, it was supervised learning where you had an input of let's say Oscar Wilde and an expected label so that a neural network could pass that data through itself and learn how to get to an accurate result based on what that input data was and the layer or the label that it was expecting. And we also learned a little bit about layers that analyzed that data. In this video, we're going to look more closely at layers in a little bit later, but most of this video is going to be devoted to models. So a key concept that you have to be familiar with when you're exploring neural networks and deep learning is this idea of a neural network model. We're going to be looking at that closely in this video so that in videos four, five, six, seven, uh, we can look at other concepts such as weights, activation functions, testing validation and loss, prediction, and the types of neural networks. After we explore what TensorFlow and Keras is, we're going to start actually using this knowledge to create code that is going to be a shallow neural network. We're going to learn what that is in video 10. And then using that knowledge to solve a binary text classification problem in video 11 by looking at Oscar Wilde and Dan Brown texts and teaching a neural network to solve which text it is looking at. Is the text Dan Brown or is it Oscar Wilde? And in this video, we're going to be dealing with a little bit of the code from that series without a lot of explanation, meaning I'm just going to show you the code in this video to explain what a model is, how it works, what layers are on a little bit more of a detailed level, and then explain all this code as we create it and write it in video 11. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. So what is a model? Well, a neural network model is essentially the overall architecture and the thing itself that is interpreting, processing uh, data, being trained on data, and then being implemented later on unseen data. So how do we create a model? Well, there's a couple different ways you can create models using TensorFlow and Keras. There are essentially two kinds of models. There's a sequential model, which is what we're going to be using in this series. These are linear models, meaning they are uh, simple, relatively speaking. More complex models require different architecture and nonlinear setups, and those are called functional models. We're not going to see that in this series unless there is a demand for it, and I might do that in a later video. Models are created in Keras just like this, with one simple line of code. Now, the model is something that you can train. So this will be your entire neural network. Uh, you'll train it on a set of input data with an expected label, and that's called supervised learning, as we saw in the last video. And then this model is going to have a series of layers to it. These layers are going to be the layers that in, uh, receive the input data and act upon that input data. Now, there are a lot of different layers that you can use in Keras, as we're going to see throughout this long series. And this first bit of the series, we're going to be working with a simple, very common dense layer. This you'll be able to see in binary and multi-class text classification. As we get to more complex neural networks, such as in video 13, when we start doing image classification, you're going to be introduced to other types of layers, notably convolutional layers. A layer is different because of how it acts upon the data and how it receives and sends that data. While a dense layer is going to be linear and process the data straightforward, a convolutional layer is going to iterate across data differently. And additionally, there is also long short term memory layers, which retain a little bit of the data from the previous iteration. All of this sounds very complex, and I promise it is one of the things that you will learn by simply doing. And you're going to learn a lot more about layers as we get through this course through videos 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, as we do different tasks with different neural networks. 
Now, in Keras and TensorFlow, you can provide a model summary, which will tell you how your model is overall uh, shaped in text form. You can compile that model, and you can most importantly train and save that model so that you can use it on unseen data for future applications. All of this is possible in Keras with very, very little code. And while this code might look complex to someone who's not familiar with Keras and TensorFlow, I assure you, if you take the time and go through it slowly, it will make perfect sense. Layers have many different arguments, and we're going to see this in the next video in more detail when we look at specifically weights and activation functions. This is going to be when we actually look at what ReLU is, what Sigmoid is, and other activations. These are ways in which data is transformed by each layer through mathematics and algebra. Again, we're going to see that in a later video. Layers have a ne neural network size so that it knows how many neurons are going to be acting upon the data. Now, you can have this range from anything from 16 to 3,000 to whatever number that you would desire. The larger the number of neurons, the more complex the neural network is going to be. And the more layers that you have, the more complex the neural network will be. All of this will come at the cost of CPU or GPU power. Now, it might seem like you should just make the most complex neural network possible to solve any problem because the more number of layers that you have and the more neurons that you have in your layer, by default, that must mean that your neural network and your model will be stronger. In fact, that is not the case. Oftentimes, it will be useful to use smaller, simpler architectures to solve problems, whereas other times it might be more necessary to use more complex models to solve different problems. An overly complex model might result in what's known as overfitting, which we're going to see in our training video in video four. A too under complex model, so a too simple of a model, might result in what's known as underfitting, so a model that can't actually make decisions based on unseen data and doesn't actually learn anything from the training data. So whenever you are creating a model, remember that layers and the amount of layers don't necessarily equal quality. As you're going to find, creating neural networks to solve problems is a lot of trial and error. That being said, a lot of that trial and error can be eliminated if you understand the basics of what each layer does how it should be used, and what layers should be used to solve certain problems, i.e. a dense layer is useful for a text problem, and a convolutional layer is useful for an image-based problem. Again, all of this is going to make sense through practice. So why is a model useful? Well, like I said, this model that we create and train can be saved, which means it will be on our computer for all of time. We can then upload that model in Keras and load it and run it across unseen data in future applications. So that is the basic introduction to what a model is and how layers work in Keras and TensorFlow. Again, we are going to be looking at all of this in much more detail as we go through and create a binary text classification model in Keras and TensorFlow in video 11. That's going to be it for this video, though. Please look forward to the next video when we start talking about training, weights, and activation functions, and we're going to be addressing some of the key issues that you need to think about while training a neural network model, such as overfitting and utter underfitting, and some of the basic ways to resolve those issues. That's going to be it for now, though. Thank you for listening.